I wanted to explain a little bit more about what the, the meaning of pitch is. And pitch is always based on 12. For this is the center of your your house, and a 12 12 pitch should mean it's a steep slope. In other words, for every 12 here, you go up 12, and that that's what a 12 12 pitch would be. For a 6 12 slope or pitch, that means it's it's not as steep, and for every 12 of run here you go up six so if that were 24 for example that would be 12 this is half of that a 512 would be similar for every 12 here you go up five so it's a little bit less steep the one we chose was 11 12 for every 12 i go up 11. so looking again at the speed square you see the common scale so i was just going to demonstrate those different pitches uh, by resting the lip on the top of the board and then pivot up to get a 512 like we showed on the paper you just go up to the five here on the common scale so to get a little to get a 612 you go up to the six and then you draw your your line and that would equate to a 25 degree angle. A 5 12 pitch would equate to a 23 angle. An 8 12 would be a 35 degree angle. And the 11 that we chose is 42. So that's a little bit more on the, the meaning of pitch and how to get the angles. I have an update for the doghouse. I've put a front on the house. And then on this piece here is one big piece, but I put it on and then traced out the hole from the back and then cut out the hole with the jigsaw. And the next step will be to put trim on. I started putting the trim on the drip edge part. And notice how this is not all the way flush because when you put the plywood on, it needs to clear the top of this board. So the way I made sure it would clear, I just screwed on a small scrap of plywood and push it up as far as I push push the trim piece up as far as I could and then uh, screwed it in. Now to recap on the, the rafter discussion that we just had. These are the three components. This vertical line we cut. And here's the line where we cut for the bird's mouth when it rests on the plate. And then the another, other eight inches, we had another cut. That was that 42 degree cut we talked about. Other thing to keep in mind is when we do the rafter calculation, basically you'll just have to um, uh, calculate one rafter and cut it out and then you'll use that as a template to simply uh, use a pencil and mark out all the other rafters to exactly fit your master that way it makes you know that every rafter is exactly the same and that everything will fit uniformly I have an update on the doghouse. I've just finished the trim all the way around. I've used basically just uh, fence, cedar fence pickets. Uh, ripped them down the middle so basically the trim pieces are one half inch thick by a little over two inches in width. I think that's a pretty good scale for this size doghouse. I made a 
picture frame entry there for the door. Here's a side view. And here's the back. So next step is to paint it and put the roof on. Okay, since the last update I've painted it and put some plywood on the roof. On the plywood roof, uh, this piece here goes up to the middle of the pitch and this piece goes up under it. Therefore this piece here needs to be cut a little bit to allow the same width as this so that going down there will be the same overhang. In other words, this board will be a little bit shorter to, to allow this, for this width here. There's a little bit of overhang at the grip edge to facilitate water runoff. There's a side view where this piece goes flush with the other piece. So the next step is to put uh, roofing paper and uh, shingles and we should be done. The next step is to put a drip edge on the lower end of the roof that should protect the edge of the top sheathing from water damage and uh, I use this drip edge that's one by two and the like that and the reason you put this on first is so that the tar paper that you put on can be over it so when the water runs down it runs over the tar paper down to the drip edge okay the drip edge is nailed on and here's the piece that folds over so in other words you just for the part that extends out you just cut the seam here and fold it back. I've nailed the drip edge onto the top and if you look at the side here you can see how the folded part uh, covers this edge and then the other drip edge coming down will cover this part so that you'll have complete coverage of that front edge. The next step is to cut the tar paper. Uh, this length from here to here is 39 inches with a little bit of overhang. Now I'm using this tool This is a Stanley Sharpshooter and it's basically a staple gun to uh, tack the tar paper on. I'll demonstrate that. You don't want to put too many staples. You don't want potential for a lot of holes in the tar paper. And notice how the tar paper goes over the drip edge so that when the water comes down it will uh, go over the drip edge and down the side. Here's the other side of the doghouse uh, so I need to put another piece of tar paper 39 inches long 
and I'll put it underneath that one so that the rain will shed correctly. The new paper will go under here, down to here. Now to put grip edge on the front and back, which over the tar paper. That way when the wind blows this way in the driving rain, it will not penetrate underneath the tar paper. So get a long piece of grip edge, hold it up like this, find the center peak, cut a vertical line on this front part, and then fold it. And then nail it on. Here's the front grip edge after it's nailed on. And from the top view, you can see how the grip edge is on top of the tar paper. So that it, when water, water will not come in this way and it will just drain down the edge. And then water draining down here will just fall off. So the drip edge protects it. All, on all sides. Now we're starting the shingles and the first thing to do is put a solid strip at the bottom. Cut off a piece. Cut off a solid piece all the way across and put that down with no tabs That keeps water from penetrating, so that there are no tabs here for water to go into. The next step is to put your shingle all the way down, but put this tab so that this distance from here and the distance from here is the same. The roof is complete. Notice how these seams line up with each other, but on alternating rows. On the top part of the roof, all you have to do is cut long pieces of shingle and uh, fold them over and nail them so that the nails are hidden under each tile until you get to the very end. On the very end you have to put nail holes on the very last one, but uh, I just covered those up with some kind of sealant. The doghouse is complete, so I'll give you a tour of each side. Here's the front view. For the entryway, to help uh, keep water from rot rotting the floor, I put a piece of flashing right here and then caulked it very well on the sides to uh, make that a smooth entrance and to prevent water from penetrating down into the trim.